What's good is not with Obscure 8. It's been a minute. My apologies. We're back with a uh, tutorial. It's really like a behind the beat. Um, I dropped a, a, a beat yesterday on IG that got a lot of good feedback. So I just wanted to break down the process of recording that, that beat, um, what went into it. Um, I started with a cajon drum, um, had multiple percussive instruments like shakers and and experimented with different sounds just to get something unique and it turned out pretty dope so I just want to walk through that so uh, let's get to it I got the session pulled up in reason uh, I started with the kick drum the cajon kick with a basic pattern as you can hear I'm a solo the uh, the kick drum let you hear In the beginning video, you can kind of see the main rhythm that I started with. And it's just really the, the cajon drum getting a, a kick uh, type sound. And I used a SM57 as the main uh, instrument microphone and the Rode NT1A as a somewhat overhead type microphone um, for some of the sounds as you can see. So let's step into it. So that's the kick drum. I layered, um, I think the next thing I moved on to was the snare. And I used a bamboo, some bamboo sticks um, as the snare drum. I used the bottom of them hitting. On the cajon drum, they have these, well, the particular one I have, it has these snare um, pads or areas that create a snare type effect there's some wires or springs within within the cajon drum that makes it kind of snap so I use the the bottom of the bamboo sticks to kind of give a different type of snare sound and as I said as you can see there are two tracks one of them is the overhead track and the other is the snare track I'm gonna play both of them I'm gonna unmute both of them So yeah, so that's the kick drum, snare drum, and then I moved on to, um, I took a, a serving plate, it was like a bartender type serving plate, and used the, the bamboo sticks on the side of it to give like a, um, a, a hi-hat type feel. So I'm going to unmute that and let you hear it. And then I added another hit of the bamboo sticks on that on that plate to give it a like a symbol, a symbol type feel. The next thing I used were um, was this Hawaiian lei, and if I'm pronouncing it wrong, forgive me. It's called like kooky nuts, cocoa nuts, um, around this lei, and I untied it, and then I kind of used that as like a percussive type um, instrument, so to speak. So that's what you hear. I, I recorded like an overhead piece of that, and the um, SM57 close to the cajon drum. They're hitting the cajon cajon drum as you can see in the um the, the beginning video so i'm gonna unmute let me unmute that so you can so it's just dropping these uh the hawaiian lay with the nuts on the uh the cajon drum One main experiment in this whole project was recording the vibration of rice. I know it sounds crazy, but, you know, growing up in the South, um, we all had or wanted to have systems in our car. So if you had subs in your in your trunk or whatever, 
your your trunk will vibrate. It will have this loud metal sound um, of the the metal pieces in the trunk vibrating. So I wanted to kind of mimic that that rattle. So I put rice on a, a, a serving plate, like a the same bartender serving plate, and then took a sub pack, which is just a, a, a mobile sub woofer that you can wear on you or wear in the studio. And then I put it up under the um, the plate. So what you hear is that rice shaking. And it's, it's, it's me trying to mimic the sound of like a trunk rattling just to give that the kick drum um, uh, some extra layers, an extra feel to it. Let me solo just the the rice shaking. And it's, it's very low, but it's just like a, a very low, subtle version of if you're on the outside of a car, aside from the bass that you would feel, you would also hear that faint rattle of the trunk shaking. So that's what that is. And it came out pretty dope with this track. So after that, I recorded, you know, the bass and several analog instruments, which I'm going to get into. But I, I re also recorded a layer of an ARP kick from the ARP Odyssey just to give the um, the Cajon kick drum an extra layer of, you know, thump to it. So this is what you hear. And I'm going to solo that. So that's a it's kind of a bass kick, short bass kick um, from the Arp Odyssey, and I ran it through the DBX 166XL, which is a uh, a compressor and a, a limiter and gate, and just got the settings right, tweaked the settings so I I could get a nice thump to add as a a layer within that frequency range that the the Cajon drum just wasn't doing enough for me. So that's what you hear with that. All right, so from there, we're gonna go to the, the Moog um, bass, which came from the, the, the Siren. And as you can see in the video, it's just the Moog Siren um, triggered by, I have a, it's a module, so I use a, a keyboard um, attached through MIDI to trigger it. And that is the bass, the bass sound that you hear. So I'm gonna play that. And the distortion that you hear on it is from the Moog, um, it's a f effects pedal. It's a Moog overdrive pedal that I use from time to time. And that's what you hear in terms of the distortion. So I ran ran the, uh, the siren through the Moog pedal and then back into the DAW. And then I added shakers. I used strictly the um, the Rode NT1A with the shakers. And I had two shakers going at one time and, and kind of changed up the rhythm after about four bars. So that's what you hear with the shakers. I'm gonna unmute that. So I'm just shaking with that. And then I changed up the rhythm around here. And then I added a guitar layer, a simple guitar, it's just like two notes, you know, just to give it a layer. But I ran the guitar through um, the Lexicon MX300. It's a multi-effects unit. Um, like I said, I was trying to think out of the box and not use a lot of, not use any third-party plugins. The only thing I used was the, um, the EQ and filters within Reason itself, but no plugins, no VSTs, just strictly instruments around the studio just to give it a different type feel 
I recorded the guitar part first, like a clean guitar pluck, and then I ran it through the MX300 to give it uh, an effect. So that's what you hear with this. I'm gonna play it solo. Just two notes, that's it. And it's all layers. It's all about layering up the, the beat and giving it different pockets and feels just to give it movement and, and keep it interesting. So then after that, I recorded the chord prologue. Um, it's an analog polysynth. Um, the particular one I have is eight voice, but I use the chord prologue on this. Again, very simple, um, very simple melody with the prologue. It's really just a couple, really two or three notes. And um, you can see it in the video. Exactly what happens in the video is exactly how I recorded it. Now the Korg Prologue has internal effects. It has a, a digital effects section. It's an analog synth, but it has a digital effects section. So the reverb that you hear on the, the Prologue synth piece is, is from the, the Prologue itself. Then on top of that, I recorded the uh, the Moog, a, a Moog lead. Now the Moog lead by itself is, is pretty plain. I'm gonna play that by itself. It's pretty plain. You know, and with that one as well, same way you see it in the video is the exact same way I recorded it. But what makes it pop is um, a parallel, and I'm going to show you within reason, I like to do a parallel uh, track for effects. So I took the Moog lead and then ran a parallel track um, from the original lead just so I could put the effects on that parallel track. So then from the parallel track, I ran that. I don't have it hooked up right now, but I ran it um, direct out to the MX300. So the final version you hear is this Moog FX final track. That's what you're going to hear. And you're going to hear that combined with the original lead to give it that airy. Um, I think it has some reverb and delay on it. It has a lot of delay on it. So that makes that that sound stand out more is the effect section, that parallel track. So let's hear it all together. Then on top of all that, I added just a vocal um, kind of just a one shot vocal shout, you know, just to give it a, a, another layer. And what I did with that is ran that through the MX 300 as well, um, for the reverb. And I think the other effect on it may be, maybe slight delay. No, with that one, it's just it's just pure reverb on it, and maybe like a a, a flanger um, effect. So that's basically how it was created. Um, came out dope. I didn't use any plugins, and just really tried to challenge myself on um, experimenting one but really thinking outside the box and how I can push you know the instruments I have with in, in the room to, to another level and give it a sound that nobody can mimic it's hard to mimic a sound like that because for one you don't have the exact same sounds I have and then it just gives that human element because there's some live performances um, some live 
uh, swing, some live timing differences that make it um, a more interesting type type uh, composition, an interesting type beat. So it just, you know, it came out tough. Appreciate you tuning in. Um, like, subscribe, share, comment, and we'll see you on the next one. Yeah.